move on to the news that I want to talk about today. That is the big Bitcoin ETF performance after a month. I think this is a very important update to uh, speak to you all. Uh, for you all to understand, you know, what really happens over here and uh, what does it mean? Most important, what does it mean? Now, the in a significant achievement, right? Uh, the spot Bitcoin ETF exchange traded funds has swiftly attracted 10 billion in assets under management within just 20 days of their introduction to the market. Now, this remarkable remarkable influx underscores the robust interest investors have in this novel investment channel uh, leading this whole thing uh is the blackrock's iShares trust i bid and fidelity and followed by fidelity wise origin bitcoin fund fbtc now uh the for i bid they 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 have AUM of three point seven billion and for Fidelity three point one billion. This is not a surprise given that uh that both funds are trillion dollar funds and uh to be frank to be really really frank this is just a very small portion of what these funds could actually bring in. Okay, so nevertheless, <clears throat> it is uh something that uh a uh, good sign so far. And not far behind from Bit, uh, BlackRock as well, Fidelity, you have ARX, 21 shares ETF, uh, the ticker symbol ARKB. They also made a notable entry, amazing, just under 1 billion. And I believe in the next few days, you would see this uh, thing surpassing 1 billion. Now, concurrently, what you also have is the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, GBTC, experiencing a slowdown in outflows. They have been seeing outflows uh, since day one of the ETF. Uh, a lot of them were, were not happy because the uh, Grayscale had the highest fees. Uh, to and, you know, So they wanted to bring it out and put it in other areas. So uh, we have seen a stabilization in the trend, in the withdrawal trend, and that is also a good thing. Now, According to data from Bitcoin Archive, right, the US-based spot Bitcoin ETF has surged to nearly 37 billion in AUM within their first 25 days on the market. This figure represents 39.8% of the 93 billion AUM of gold ETFs and 28.5% of the combined 130 billion AUM of both asset classes. So you can as you can see this is uh, a huge huge development that we are seeing so far. Now if you if this is what uh getting in a month, expect it you know what could be the number after having and a year after having. All right. So but no, don't celebrate too far saying that wow this is a huge number over here because it's important to note that. Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, GBTC, held $27 billion in AUM before its conversion to an ETF. So this actually tempers the perceived growth. You know, people will be thinking, wow, 37 uh, in the first place already, there was 27 B inside this already. All right. So this is something important everybody should know. Now, despite all of this, right, the overall performance of spot Bitcoin ETF suggests a promising future for the market. Now, this trend not only reflects the high potential for growth, but also signifies the increasing acceptance and integration of cryptocurrency investments within the portfolios of traditional institutional investors. I've mentioned in the past, uh, the moment we have the, if we have 1 billion users, right, this thing is going off the roof. It will have its life on its own, okay? As long as you have this crypto uh, people, 1,000, 1 billion people inside this. Now, the enduring interest in Bitcoin ETFs alongside comparisons to the early success of Spider Gold Shares ETF, this uh, highlight their potential, potential to substantially impact the cryptocurrency market. Now, with such strong start, strong start that we've seen so far, expectations for the future Bitcoin ETFs are high, hinting a further expansion, enhanced investor engagement, and the potential introduction of more cryptocurrency-related ETFs 
such as those based on Ethereum and Ethereum as well. Okay. Now, if you look at this overall, one thing I want to see, these are all fundamental developments, but what about the technical development? You know, so if but if we do see something, some interesting things coming up, right? This could actually be very, very exciting. So how do we do see that? Okay, now I want to bring up this chart next. Now, what you are seeing right over here, these are all halvings. These yellow lines are all halving. Having. So we're going to have a having soon in April, right? Now, these are all all-time highs. The value of the all-time highs just before the halvings. Let's have mark them as ATH. So what we have here is that the prices have, uh, you know, they have never broken the all-time high before having. And now, as you can see, what's all actually happening over here, we are really pretty near and we still have time, you know, before price breaks all time highs. Okay, so we, we have like 1.5 months left before this breaks the all time high. So if it breaks the all time high, what we have over here is actually a, a change in the previous price habits. Okay, so this is what I want to highlight over here. Now, like I said before, Bitcoin has never been an all-time high. And uh, we have 1.5 months away. Now, what happens if it surpasses the all-time high before the next halving? I see two potential scenarios over here. The first one is a deviation from traditional market cycles, which is 12 to 18 months before price peak to potentially leading to an earlier than expected peak. So what this means is that you know, usually after halvings, it takes about 12 to 18 months before Bitcoin comes down, right? So if we have price actually breaking the all-time high, that peak that we are expecting could actually come before the 12th month mark. That is one potential that I see. But to identify this, this is quite safe. Usually what we see in the Bitcoin market is there will be a strong drive up Okay, and then what happens next is that they get all these buyers coming in thinking that this is going to go really high. And everybody's talking about Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. And next thing you know, those are the sell-off that comes now. So if you see a very strong push down, that could mark the beginning of that sell-off. So this is one possibility that we are looking at. Now, the second thing over here, or the the more popular version, I could say, is the unprecedented market strength in Bitcoin. Means that because of the ETFs, because of what we have seen so far, the developments, more big boys are coming in. So what can happen is that the Bitcoin value is propelled beyond levels anticipated number predicted by financial institutions. Now, if you look at those financial institutions like the banks, one of them, the... Uh, is the standard charted now standard chart predicts a hundred twenty thousand valuation by end of 2024 and two hundred thousand by 2025 i'm trying to look through and see my the way i'm looking at it i'm looking at about between 84 to about 120 that that is my very very uh how would i put it very um you know i don't uh less bullish kind of prediction is between 84 to 120. I'll be even happy at one if it surpassed the 100,000 mark. But you have standard chart doing what saying is 120 and 2025, 200,000. And uh, you, of course, we're not looking into the the uh, YouTube's prediction. I mean, if you look at that, my God, you can't believe that they're talking about half a million to one million per Bitcoin. And uh, if you do the maths itself, I don't think within this year, you can have so many people so attracted to Bitcoin that they are buying so much, okay? So this is something for everyone to ponder. And uh, yeah, let's move on to the charts.